Hello everyone, welcome to the benchmark for Dolphin. So, I promised this a while ago, and I'm actually about to upgrade the thing, putting in a 4690K, that's a quad-core hyper-threaded process, and the reason for that, while I think this computer is still cool for your first ever build, and it's relatively cheap for what it is and what it can do, I do feel like that for uh, gaming in the future is going to be limited by the processor, because it doesn't have hyper-threading, and it's not a multi-core processor either, it's the G3258. But that wasn't really the main intent, was it? No, we wanted to do a lot of local couch co-op kind of games, and we wanted to especially run Dolphin. That's what it was centered around. If you wanted to do everything but Dolphin, a Core i3 would have done you just fine, hyper-threading, and a decent GPU. There's plenty of budget GPUs like the GTX 950, the 960, but... Anyway, let's actually just have a look at how this thing's performed. So, I've been playing a lot of the really intensive games, and today we're going to be looking at the GameCube ones, and we're going to do a video on the Wii later. But, so, let's just have a look through here. These are all the games I've downloaded, but we're actually going to take a look really quickly at my graphics settings. So, I'm using an R7 240, which is a very cheap graphics card, and just to let you know, there are way better options, and I would recommend getting something like, you know, an R7, or, sorry, an R9... 380 that's $200 that's a pretty good card R9 390 is the next step up just make sure that it'll fit in the case that we've chosen but for running just you know casually playing some games a lot of older ones this will be pretty fine so I've also I'm also going to be using MSI Afterburner to show you the uh, the usage the of the GPU and the CPU as well as the temperatures again we're running the G3258 at 3.8 gigahertz on stock voltage on the stock heatsink and it is a pretty small case but uh for what it is but it does stay relatively cool and keep in mind that dolphin is still in its development versions so you have 4.02 which is the uh, stable version and then you have the development versions the stable version is missing a lot of features we're using the development version the stable version is missing stuff like it hasn't been upgraded in almost three years it's missing stuff like the ability to use a wii u gamecube adapter on it for like accurate gamecube controls because there are pc there are gamecube to pc controller adapters but they're not nearly as accurate as the one made by uh, nintendo some things to bear in mind we're also going to be using direct 3d for our back end that's very important OpenGL sometimes people have better results i think nvidia cards do a little bit better but sometimes amd do better but direct 3d that works for us so that's what we're going to be using we're going to be doing with uh, 416 by 9 Use full screen enhancements. We're going to be trying to shoot for 720p here uh, with these two off. And we're going to be changing this probably down to uh, 1.5 times native or native if need be. Again, the whole point is to run it. We don't, we, and just for it to be stable. The problem with Dolphin, and well, it's really a problem with a lot of the GameCube games, is that when uh, the frame rate dips, the game slows down. And sometimes the audio is tied, tied to that, so you hear like hitching and audio and the audio just sounds like garbled just like garbage all right so first off we have f-zero gx so this is actually quite a demanding game you're gonna be noticing the beginning here there's gonna be a lot of hitching a lot of stuttering up until we get into the races it's gonna be kind of all over the place until we get in there so let's just start out the ruby cup now one thing to bear in mind with Dolphin games is, especially on the development build, a lot of just areas are just going to be slow down messes, right? There are some games that, like, you know, they'll run per pretty much perfectly up until a certain point, and then all of a sudden you get, like, like three frames per second in one area or something, like in Twilight Princess in the Hyrule Field. That's more to do with Dolphin that has nothing to do with our processor. I run at 4790K with an R9 390 on my maid rig, even turning everything down to the Lotus settings. I still get slowed down in those areas. Like, Hyro Field, like, on this computer, gets, up, like, 8 frames per second. And in my on my main, I get, like, 13. So, yeah. Anyway, here's F-Zero, and, yeah. Runs pretty smoothly, right? Core temperatures seem to be pretty good. Again, you're not going to be noticing too much GPU utilization, although it's not horrible. It's maintaining 60, and this is one of the more demanding games. Again, we're using Direct 3D. You might have better luck if, right now, you might have a computer that can actually run this game just fine. Just switch from OpenGL to Direct 3D. I know it defaults at OpenGL, 
But yeah, this game runs quite nice. There are a few tracks where it does get a little stuttery. Again, more to the more with the problem of Dolphin not being a complete emulator, and, you know, for it being free and open source, I mean, can you really blame it? It's been running off donations for years, and they've had people, like, leave and then come back and then leave and then come back, so it's kind of been all over the place, but it's still steady, and 5.0 is only going to get better. I'm really excited for that. But yeah, F-Zero, GX runs just fine. Alright guys, here's another one for you, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. So I was actually going to do a comparison video with this and the Wii U version. Unfortunately, the Wii U version kind of stomps it without textures. Now I wanted to do a, like a textured, custom texture comparison to the Wii U version. And actually, this version came very, very close and in some cases ran better. The problem was, is it only ran better on OpenGL for people I also saw online. So yeah, unfortunately, direct to 3D, we're not going to be able to do that. So, yeah, probably going to have to cancel that video. But let's take a look at this. Now, I've spent the better half of the time I've had this system with Twilight Princess. And that's mainly because I never beat it on the Wii. And if you wanted to replay this game, this is actually not too bad of a way to do it. Okay, so again, this is 720p. It is a little bit jittery at times in these town areas. Now, there's three... Uh, parts of the game that we need to talk about frame rate in. So, there's Hyrule Field specifically, a lot of the open areas. There are these town areas, these secluded small areas, and then there's the dungeons. Dungeons run 30 FPS almost all the time. So these areas you might have to crank down the resolution. So this is a 720p. And then, so, but they're mostly playable. I mean, you're not going to be doing intense combat here usually. Now, where there's a problem is over here. And you're going to be noticing really quick why the game, like, Dolphin gets really bad when you have frame rate dips, and this is why. So not only does the game run like crap, so does the sound. Now, I still say it's relatively playable. It's just very, very tedious to get to where you want to go, which is a problem. And I'm currently on a quest where I have to traverse Hyrule Field, so eh, not, not too happy about that. So, yeah, that can definitely get annoying in the latter half of the game. You don't have to spend... Again, Twilight Princess, the main thing with that game is dungeons. So, you're going to be doing most of your time in dungeons. And it's really Hyrule Field that has the problem. Anything that says Hyrule and Field in it. Hyrule Castle is still fine. But, yeah, Hyrule Field, it's really just Dolphin. It's buggy. It's not quite there yet. 4.02 doesn't have this problem. But then again, you can't play with the game controller. Let's just get out of here. But it is still playable. Most of what you're going to be doing is in the dungeon and towns. And that's kind of all fine. If you don't mind the occasional stutter. And if you do, well, just drop it down to like 480p native. It's fine. Alright guys, here's Mario Kart Double Dash. Probably my favorite Mario Kart game of all time. I've sunk hundreds of hours into this thing. And I've sunk a lot more in total with the GameCube version on Dolph. Alright guys, so here's Mario Kart Double Dash. I've sunk hundreds of hours into this game. Probably like one of my favorite... No, probably my favorite Mario Kart game of all time. I think it easily beats out 8. But anyway, so... This game does have some performance issues, mainly with... Uh, when you have it at 720p on this rig. Which is unfortunate. We'd like to play it at a higher resolution. But it still plays just fine. And I actually haven't had... There are some moments where, like, when it's loading in everything, like when it's about to start the race, the frame rate does dip a bit, but menus are fine, and pretty much every track I've played is just... plays absolutely perfectly. Stay, maintains 60 FPS almost all the time. Rarely does it dip below, like, you know, 58 or something like that. Alright, guys, here's Mario Kart Wii, and aside from some stuttering at the start of every race, it runs pretty well. About as good as Double Dash at times. Again, we are still running at 480p. Now, something to note is that this is actually going to look a lot better on your TV than it will on like a native Wii or GameCube. And the reason for that is that if you're using a GameCube, you're most likely using the composite or at best S-Video. And if you have something better, it's probably RGB SCART to an HDMI converter because the GameCube component cables are ludicrously expensive so you're going you know your PC is going through HDMI out I hope 
if you, I hope you're not using VGA, but anyway, HDMI is way, way more cheaper than something like a GameCube component cable, which are like $200, so you're getting the highest digital output quality that's available out right now. You know, the, and you can of course bump up the internal resolution with just a simple graphics card upgrade. It still looks way better than it would on the Wii or GameCube, and that's awesome. The only problems you're gonna have to deal with from time to time are the occasional slowdowns, the frame rate drops, and all that, but there's so few and far between. Like, I'm a very nitpicky kind of person. I will really judge frame rate. In fact, I have a series in which I judge the ports of games on PCs, and I'm playing these games just fine. I'm not having too much of a problem. There are some games that are just very difficult to play, but it's less to do with the rig and more to do with Dolphin. Alright guys, so what you're looking at here is our final game, Super Smash Bros. Brawl with Project M install. That's why you see all the custom characters. This is going to be the game most people are going to be playing. Now, obviously, competitively, I would not recommend this because of Dolphin's, you know, inaccuracies, its frame rate issues, especially with this game. I'm able to play it just relatively fine at 480p. There's not too many dips, but if you want to play competitively, absolutely not. There's way too many brief frame rate drops. It's not enough to wreck the game at times, but it can be a little bit annoying, especially if there's like some decisive pivotal moves and you just cannot pull them off because like the frame rate drops at that second. So yeah, definitely not for competitive play, but for couch brawling casually, it's pretty much the cheapest alternative to playing Brawl with because you gotta pay, purchase a Wii, you gotta purchase a copy of Brawl, which is starting to go up in price now. Or a Wii U. And you, of course, can easily put Project M on this thing. You just need to put it on the ISO and play. You don't have to do some ridiculous stuff with the Wii version. And, like, you know, put it on a USB drive. But anyway, yeah, it works pretty well. And, you know, there are some uh, frame drops here and there, as I've said. But, it's you know, it's playable. Depth, for sure. Uh, one thing, though, is that even on my main rig at 720p... Or, sorry, at 1080p, I really was having trouble playing this game. 720p on my main rig, it was fine. 48p here, it plays mostly just fine. Now, there are a couple games that I wanted to show off, but either they were just way too demanding and not optimized at all, or you know, I just don't have the control set up for them. Xenoblade Chronicles is probably going to be another demanding game. It does, uh, it, on my main rig, it runs fine, and this one, it does stutter quite a bit. Uh, the last story is probably out of the question for this rig. That is something that requires a supercomputer to run, and even then, it has a lot of dips. Yeah, it's pretty hard to run that game. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry, it's still a little bit amateur. I really wanted to do, like, some more with it, but this is what I can do for now. I'm going to be upgrading it later today with the 4690K and with a better air cooler, so that I can overclock to 4.0 gigahertz this time around. But anyway, yeah. That is it for our build for now, the G3258 R7240 build. I'm going to be, later on after that, I'm going to be upgrading it with the 380. And we're going to be doing some tests with some more modern games when I put in that process, just to see how much of a performance difference we will get. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.